good morning out there for Facebook Live. This is Shanae with SCZ Live here at Sedgwick County Zoo. Now, those of you that know me know that there's two things that I absolutely love. I love frogs and I love bats. And today, I'm so excited that we have John with us. John is one of our senior keeper here, our zoological manager at the Ectotherm Collection. And John is going to give us an amazing lesson today on the metamorphosis of frogs. Hello, everybody. So what we have here today, uh, we have a group of, uh, of poison dart frogs. They're called blessed poison frogs. They're one type of uh, poison dart frog. Uh, the zoo acquired them for the first time several months ago. Um, and it was a, a new species of us. We worked with other dart frogs over the years. Uh, but we wanted to uh, get these guys up and running and breeding. Uh, we have an exhibit plan for them. Um, but right now they're in back holding. And I just wanted to walk through uh, the steps of, of uh, care uh, in regards to breeding these animals and the steps that the, that the animals go through, the life phases. Um, so this is where we're housing our adult animals. We actually have 19 frogs in here. Uh, it might seem like a small space for 19 frogs, and you're probably not going to see a lot of frogs in here until I start moving stuff around. But these are, while they are dart frogs and dart frogs are small, these guys are extra small. They're called thumbnail dart frogs. So they're even smaller than your typical uh, poison dart frog that, you, that you'll see out there. Um, but we house the adults in a, in a planted uh, terrarium. And so we have a variety of plants in here. If we move around a little bit, you might be able, there's a oh, couple adults down. down there. And uh, so they're beautiful little frogs. Uh, nice, bright red caps on their head, um, blue on the legs, uh, but very pretty frogs. Let's see if we can get this guy to sit still for a minute. Now the reason we have a oh, petri dish in here is um, for reproduction. So we put these petri dishes under these little coconut uh, husk hides. And how that works, well, make sure he doesn't get up too high. And That's right. Take a, a jump out of here. You see they're very bold frogs, and that is, uh, this coloration is a warning uh, that these are uh, toxic. Uh, so everybody's heard, uh, I'm sure, stories about the poison dart frogs being used to put uh, toxins on the tip of arrows or darts used for hunting uh, in, in different regions. And that is true. Um, these animals, they're diurnal, they're bold animals out during the day, and that is because they are toxic. Uh, the way they develop those toxins, I can touch this animal, it's completely harmless. Um, those toxins are developed, uh, they, they, they pull alkaloids, uh, compounds from the uh, prey items that they're eating in the wild, little spiders, little ants, little different uh, bugs out in the wild, and they store those toxins and then they can secrete them uh, they use them to create their own toxins and secrete them through their, their skin uh, when they are stressed or feel threatened. Uh, there are some that are very, very toxic, the most toxic being uh, the uh, Philobates terribilis, uh, the terrible dart frog or golden dart frog. And then there are lesser uh, toxic animals uh, in the dart frog group. But that is that coloration. They are bold, they're out during the day, and they, that's a warning to other animals. Better not try to eat me because I am poisonous. Uh, anyhow, back to breeding with these guys, um, a lot of people uh, know about amplexus with frogs where the male locks on to the female uh, for breeding, for reproduction. That does not occur with uh, the dart frogs. What happens is the female will uh, lay the eggs, deposit the eggs, and then the, the male frog will come along and deposit sperm over the eggs. Uh, so they are not locked up, there is no amplexus, and they like for whatever reason, we found in captivity that many dart frogs like the smooth, kind of wet surface of these petri dishes, and they like a little place to hide. They'll also reproduce on leaves, uh, lay eggs on leaves of uh, the, the areas of bromeliads they like. But in captivity, this works great. And so we'll cover them, give them a little hiding place in here, and they'll deposit the eggs. I checked this morning, I didn't have any fresh eggs in here, uh, but we have some eggs set up. And so once the eggs are deposited, uh, and we can actually tell if they've been fertilized or not, uh, we will pull the eggs out of this exhibit and then move them into little containers for, uh, for uh, development. So we'll... John, are these South American frogs? Yes, yeah, so these are uh, from... So all the dart frogs, all the true uh, poison dart frogs are uh, South American, uh, and you will... Uh, Central South American... 
Um, and uh, this, these guys specifically are from central Peru. Uh, and as you can see, one of the questions we had was how many do we have? If you see 19. here on the card, you can see 0 0.0.19. 0 .19. That's the, one of the ways we uh, keep track of animals. The first zero would be if we had males. The second zero is if we had females. The third, which in this case is 19, is that we have 19 animals of unknown sex. So we know we have both males and females in here, but we just don't just specifically don't know, know the number, so we keep it as unknown for now. Uh, and that just makes it easier on us for record keeping. But we know we have males and females because we get fertile eggs and we get developing young. John, there was a question. You mentioned some of the very most poisonous star frogs. Do we have any of those most poisonous we star We do not frogs? have the uh, Phyllobates terribilis. Um, they, you do see them out there. They're in the pet trade. They are in other zoos. Uh, they're not a bad frog. They're a large dart frog. But for being such a large dart frog, they tend to be, in my experience, one of the shyer dart frogs um, and uh, seem to easily get stressed out. Although, th at the same time, uh, can be very hardy and do quite well in, in, in certain circumstances. Um, so, uh, and again, these are called thumbnail frogs because they are about the size of your thumbnail. Exactly. Uh, so, if we can get a zoom in on here, here are a couple, these are actually two different clutches of eggs. They, multiple frogs will use the petri dishes. And so, what, here, let me get a little pointer here. Uh, what you're seeing here is some eggs that are newer. You're just starting to see some division, some separate, and so some development there. And then you have these eggs here, which you're actually, on top of that egg, you're seeing some elongation. And that is that elongation of the tadpole actually forming there. And so that's that egg further along in development. Now over here, we actually have an egg that is no good, and that egg will be discarded. That egg is starting to kind of fuzz over. So this egg either was not fertilized or just did not uh, make it and so that will be removed uh, so as not to cause any kind of fungal growth that will encroach on other eggs and then these eggs will be allowed to develop. And again, the, as adults, they're not any bigger than your thumbnail. Next we have some eggs that are just about ready to hatch. So you see now you've gone to a very clear tadpole oh, yeah. shape here. Some quite large, a quite large one here, some a little smaller along this edge here, but you can actually see them moving in the egg, the egg is a clear membrane with these guys, uh, no hard shell. Uh, so you can actually see the movement in here. And what they'll do is when they're ready to uh, get out, they'll kind of struggle and rupture that, uh, that, that membrane. And, you, and that's why I keep moisture, a little bit of water in this Petri dish. And they will be out here. And uh, that's when it's time to move them into another container. So we have eggs. This guy will probably be out either end of the day today or tomorrow morning. How old, how long will these dart frogs live and how long does it take for them to go through a full metamorphosis? Uh, roughly metamorphosis, uh, maybe less than three months. Okay. Um, and these uh, dart frogs can live, oh, seven to ten, maybe a little longer years, some individuals. Um, and so, next we'll go with. Uh, and let's see, we have Luke Coleman and Deacon from East Wichita shouting out hi to us there. So, hey oh guys. my goodness, look at these guys. So we have uh, some of the youngest ones. This guy is swimming a little, a little funky here. Which so there's a lot of output with frogs, and not all of them are necessarily going to survive. So we start seeing early on healthy ones that are doing well, strong swimmers, able to write themselves really well, and less healthy individuals that, you know, we'll give this guy some time, see what, uh, see how he continues to develop, uh, but they, they obviously don't all make it. You know, frogs are high output animals with, um, with a lot of um, uh, loss along the way, or a fair amount of loss. Uh, and then what you see down here is actually food that we put in with these guys. So as soon as they hatch, they go into these little containers, nice, clean, filtered water, and, uh, and then we start adding food in with them. And what we feed them is uh, we create these little uh, feed food pellets out of a couple different types of food. We use a fish fry food and then a flake food uh, with a variety of different, uh, uh, there's dried animal, like uh, 
shrimp in it. There's uh, different types of algae uh, and all kinds of uh, nice uh, nutrients in there. And so we, we create a paste. We wet it down, grind it together, wet it down. And then we can feed these uh, to the containers, and it, uh, it will start to slowly break down, and the tadpoles can eat from those little, uh, little food pellets. That so, sounds like a lot easier than when I have to fix dinner each night. There you go. Um, so we get a little bit bigger. Oh, yeah. And then we continue. What you'll see next in development of dart frogs is eventually you start seeing. So now we're starting to see some patterning on the head, what's going to be the head of this frog. And so you're starting to see some of that adult patterning and coloration. And if you look just below the tail on um, these animals, it's going to be tough oh, to see, uh -huh. but you start to you see, see the rear marks. legs. And they actually have four rear legs. They're small still, but they start to, they, that's the first legs that you will see erupt are the back legs. And so those come out first. And we continue to feed them. We continue to care for them in the same way. We change the water daily, add new food daily, and uh, we continue to do that throughout the process until... John, at this stage, how much do they eat a day? A pellet a day or less? So it depends on the group I have. So one, dar one small tadpole isn't going to eat a whole pellet. I keep them in groups, so I'll, depending on the size of the group. If it's a small group and they're small tadpoles, I'll add one little pellet in there and that'll be enough. If, it's, uh, if they're a little bit bigger, multiple tadpoles, I'll throw two or three pellets in a day, depending on the size of the tadpole and the, uh, the number. When we start to, uh, the, the next phase is to actually move them over into a new container completely. And that is because we have animals that have started to uh, really look like frogs now. So you have uh, the various phases here. They, they, they get their front limbs in, and I'll see if I can, I don't know if you can pick up the front limbs on these, the glare from the water. Okay, got one right there if we, if we keep, uh, it, keep it still. But you start to see in the, in the, the little Rubbermaid or uh, uh -huh. uh, containers, uh, little uh, bulges on either side, and eventually you'll see one front limb come in, and then you'll see this other front limb. As soon as that other front limb is in, uh, we pull these animals and we move them over, and what we do is we keep this tilted so there's water on one side, and then they can leave the water. And that's important because once they are fully morphed, they can't uh, breathe in the water anymore. They have to come out and breathe. And so we don't want them to drown, obviously, so we move them over. And so you see the tail at this point, once the front limbs come in, they start to reabsorb the tail. You see the tail here mm -hmm. on this guy, the tail maybe mm -hmm. a little bit longer on this guy, and then this guy on the wall here has just a little bit of a nub of a tail left, and he's starting to climb now. So you have a frog that is basically ready to leave this that. container uh, within the next 24 hours. And so then what we have set up, so that's the... Uh, you're, you're, uh, at that point, you're finishing metamorphosis. And what we're left with is we have a little juvenile container, and so far we only <laughs> we have one frog that is fully morphed out. Uh, and then uh, once they get bigger than this, we'll set up a nice uh, larger terrarium, planted terrarium. But right now we just want a place for this guy to feel safe and secure and hide, so we have a lot of small gravel, aquarium gravel some standing water that he can get down into and hydrate. And then we have a little hiding oh, piece of bar bark, and then you have a very tiny, uh, newly morphed, has morphed, this guy morphed within the last week. And uh, so we keep him in here and we feed him very, very small food items. What we give them are springtails, which are very tiny, tiny little uh, invertebrates. We'll start giving the smallest fruit flies we can, uh, small new hatchling pinhead crickets we will use, uh, but we want to get these guys eating at this point. Now it's time to start eating again. They're eating live, uh, live prey and uh, start getting them growing. And at this point, this is just a miniature version of the adult. And how long of a process? This was about a, a this several is a, month process? Uh, two and a half to a three month process, okay. all in all, uh, with, uh, with uh, collecting eggs and hatching, developing uh, about a three-month process, probably. John, you said these animals weren't out on um, habitat here at Sedgwick County Zoo yet. Um, do we have a plan to have them out on exhibit? Yes, we do. We're actually, um, 
we, we have started seeing an exhibit, and that's ex exactly what would go in this space. And so we, we are, have started building an exhibit. It's, uh, we, we want something that, for these frogs to feel comfortable, we want a well-planted exhibit. So a lot of nice live plants, just like we have here. Um, and so to be able to do that, we are actually taking one of our exhibit shells, one of these fiberglass shells this size, and we're using an epoxy to create a, a, a natural looking background we're putting planters in it that we can actually hook up to a little watering systems and so that we have nice healthy plant growth uh, and, and, and uh, a nice lush looking exhibit to make the, these animals and, uh, and happy to be out and about because they are bold animals but they do want that sense of security of having a nice well planted uh, exhibit and so that's the process we're in and uh, I would I would think that um, Hopefully by the time our, our gates open back up again, we will have these guys out and ready for everybody to see. John, there were so many comments about how excited people were about the passion that you are sharing with these frogs. And, and that really goes into that, that caring, connecting, and conserving that we have here at Sedgwick County Zoo. Even small animals like this that often might not ever be seen in the wild. Um, can get so much care and conservation here in human contact. Oh yeah, and that's the thing. You know, we, you know, we pride ourselves on the level of care we give to our animals. Besides that, you know, beyond that, um, probably the first amphibians that I've ever that I ever bred in my career, and I've been doing this for over 15 years, uh, were uh, dart frogs. They're they're sort of they're a species of dart frogs that are thought of as sort of beginner amphibian reproduction, uh, and and so it's one of the first places I worked. We, were, we had several exhibits that we used dart frogs in, so we were, as we say, cranking them out. We were producing a lot of dart frogs, and so to get this new, this is a species I have never worked with in the past. I've worked with several species of dart frog, but this Ranatomea benedicta was a completely new species for me, and so it, it was sort of like turning back the clock and, and getting to have some, you know, some of that, old, that, that fun again that I haven't done for years, actually reproducing uh, dart frogs again. It's, it's not the most difficult thing to do. They do a lot of it on their own, and it's just a lot of cleaning and keeping up with it. But it, it's, it's something I enjoy. It's a lot of fun to see them develop, and they're, they're gorgeous frogs. John, thank you so much for joining us today on SCZ Live. Don't miss our next Live at 2 o'clock today, where we'll be back outside uh, in our Australia area. Thanks again for watching, and remember, even though we're closed, we're still caring.